grew up on a farm near Newton, North Carolina. My dad had a sawmill, and so I, I grew up learning how to work hard. He had uh, strong work, work ethics himself, and he instilled that in his children. And I've always been glad of that, that he taught me how to work and, and uh, make your time useful and, uh, and just going at it from daylight to dark. It was hard labor. That's, that's exactly what it was. And it uh, was something that I still cherish, although I don't know uh, if I'd want to go through it again or not, but still <laughs> it, was, uh, it was something that I appreciated. My dad took me to some races, dirt track races at North Wilkesboro and the old Charlotte Fairgrounds track in uh, Charlotte, which was almost downtown then. It was on the, at the corner of Sugar Creek Road and, and uh, South Tryon Street, wow. or North Tryon Street, I'm sorry. And uh, so we would go to a Saturday night race or Sunday afternoon race or something like that because he was a fan those 37 through 40 model Ford Coupes that they were racing back then. And how old and, were you then? And I was about uh, 10, 11 years old. Then they started building the Hickory Speedway in the early 50s. And it was a big thing in the community. You go down to the country store on a rainy day when you couldn't work at the sawmill or work on the farm, and, and those farmers and sawmillers would be sitting around there and said, boy, wait till they get that thing built. Said, I'll go up there and show them how to drive. <laughs> well, secretly, I said, I'm going to try that. I, I like what I've been seeing and uh, started driving on the highway at a relatively young age. And uh, my dad would let me drive to Sunday school when I was nine, ten years old, and even though I had two brothers older than I. Uh, but uh, he still trusted me, and uh, or maybe I pestered him more. <laughs> but anyway, he'd, he would let me drive, and that... Uh, created a lot of interest in me for as far as cars were concerned and driving and, and having uh, grown up around equipment, whether it was a truck or logging equipment. In fact, the first thing I ever drove in my life was a wheel truck, and most people don't even know what that was. So anyway, uh, when they started building that track, it, it just uh, created a lot of interest in the community because there were not many other forms of recreation or entertainment. Uh, made a couple of movie theaters in town uh, and high school sports, and that was about it. And there were not many high school sports. And so, anyway, it worked out that the first race that was ever run at the Hickory Speedway was the first race that I drove in. Wow. And uh, I had bought half interest in a car from a friend of mine by the name of John Lentz. And, and uh, so that's, it was just to have some fun on the weekend. And, uh, of course, my dad came to me after that first race, and he didn't like the idea of me driving race cars because by then, see, I was 19 at this time, by then the lumber business had expanded because his two older sons, my older brothers, were out of school and, uh, and I had gotten out of school as well, but as soon as they got out of school, they went to work in the lumber business and uh, so he had bought a planing mill and we were buying lumber off of other sawmills and so I was the person who would count the lumber when it came in to the lumber yard and I counted it when it went out. We were trucking lumber into Ohio and West Virginia and other states uh, by then. So he pointed out to me how important I was to the, the growing family business and he just couldn't see where me participating with that group of people who drove race cars back then. Most of them were bootleggers. Right. And, uh, uh, and others who were not bootleggers were considered just fools that didn't have any better sense to get out there and risk <laughs> their necks. So, so uh, he had worked awfully hard in the community to try to build respect. Uh, and that's one thing that he tried to instill into his children was to build respect with your fellow man. And uh, he couldn't see where me participating with that group could add too much to the image that he'd worked so hard to try to build. And so I saw where he was coming from. And there was danger then. I didn't see it, but he did. Uh, and uh, always danger of getting hurt or killed. Right. But that didn't enter my mind. But I could understand where he was coming from as a dad. So I said, okay. I was only one race into it, so it wasn't that hard to walk away as a driver. And I uh, said, well, this, he says, okay, to own half interest. He knew my interest in cars and knew I liked to work on them. And, and so we got my partner. He'd been a former motorcycle racer and got him to, to drive the car then. And he did pretty good, uh, never did win. Well, he only ran it six or 
maybe eight races. And then one night he got sick and didn't feel like driving and we didn't look too hard for another driver. And we were both about the same size and both had big noses and, and uh, the infield was dark at Hickory Speedway and, and so we went out into the infield and changed shirts and uh, we were wearing similar pants, khaki pants, and uh, put the helmet on, came back out and nobody knew the difference. So, so I drove the car and finished second. Now he hadn't done that well, so we figured, well, I must be the best driver. So we got by with it that night, so we just keep it going. And so I drove the car for, I don't know, five or six races or something, and and uh, then we lucked up and won a race, or outran them, or whatever. Anyway, we won right. a race, and uh, the word got back to relatively small uh, rural communities. Got word got back to my dad and. So he came to me, he said, okay, he said, if you're so determined to drive one of those things, he said, use your own name and get credit for any accomplishments that you may have along the way. So, so that opened the door for me then to, to go on and drive and still just did it for a few years, so just at Hickory and occasionally a special event, maybe at North Wilkesboro. By 1956, that was 1951 when it really started, in 1956 we had, uh, branched out to even more tracks into other states, into South Carolina and Virginia, and, and were running a lot more races. And I found myself high in the national point standings mm -hmm. for the sportsman division in 56. And the guy that I would be racing against was Ralph Earnhardt. But he decided that year that he was going to try to go for the national championship. And so I thought, well, we're we're up there high enough. We was in the top ten. First time I saw the standing sometime up in the spring. I said, we might as well just go and try to finish second. He was too far ahead of us to even challenge him. So then we we made the goal to, in 1957, to go for the championship, and, and we did. And uh, But still was working at the lumber business uh, this whole time. I mean, many nights we'd, we'd be away from home all night. For example, uh, We'd race at uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia on a Tuesday night, every Tuesday night. And uh, we'd have to leave about noon. I'd get off at noon uh, that day and uh, took us seven hours to get there. And we'd get there in time to start practice at seven o'clock and then run the race, come back home and be about seven the next morning before we would, before we'd get home. And I had to go back to work yeah, then. Okay. Uh, and so anyway, we did that for uh, two years uh, going to that track, but but anyway, we won the championship. Then uh, in 1959, we thought, well, after winning those two championships and those big races, people will come knocking on my door and want me to drive their Grand National car. <laughs> it didn't work that way though. I had to go knock on doors and, and beg for somebody to let me drive their car. Right. And uh, I started driving uh, for a guy over in Kannapolis, North Carolina in 1957 Chevrolet, which 57 Chevrolets were good race cars back then, but, but uh, he didn't have the money really to buy the best parts and everything, and uh, it was always breaking. It'd run fast, but, but something would always happen. And I was, towards the end of the season, I was getting pretty disgusted because I knew I wasn't doing my career any good, and so I said, uh, I, I need to do something about this. 